All right, I got these comments all the time about the use of Epsom salt in the garden. And few of the comments were, what is the big deal of Epsom salt in the garden? How do I know if my plants need Epsom salt? If they do, how much should I give? Well, today we're going to explore the Epsom salt and we're going to show you how to apply the minerals in the garden. So stay tuned, be right back. Hello happy YouTubers, Marcelina here at CashierGreens.com with the goal of helping you improve your garden with the Epsom salt. But before we begin, if you're new here, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, let's dive into it. So I bought uh, three bags of Epsom salt, one for my feet, one bag for my bath, and one bag for my plants. So what is the big deal of Epsom salt that people talk about? Well, there is a big deal of the Epsom salt in the garden, which I'm going to explain this later on. Now let's understand about the Epsom salt. Epsom salt, which is also the magnesium sulfate with the formula MgSO4. Now the magnesium sulfate tends to deplete in soil, so that, that is why it is necessary to replace the magnesium sulfate in your garden. And the Epsom salt, this is very cheap and you can buy this anywhere in the drugstore or you can buy it in the dollar store. And this is the best method to begin a garden or to improve your soil garden. And I'm going to show you guys how to apply the Epsom salt because, well, I would say like you cannot overdo with the Epsom salt. This is safe. You can apply too much or less. It doesn't hurt the plant. I've been using this Epsom salt in my garden and I don't see any, any, uh, bad effect of my plants except except the seeds now i did not know about this so i share this with you guys about the seeds my seeds died when i applied the epsom salt so i did research why the epsom salt causing the death of my seeds now i found out that seeds is sensitive to magnesium sulfate that's a good thing to know. So if you have seeds, don't give magnesium sulfate. Now the magnesium tend to work on the leaves and it is mobile. So there is a, the magnesium is aiding the photosynthesis. Now the photons, photosynthesis doesn't work if there is no sulfur. So that's why you need that uh, sulfate because sulfur is going to aid the chlorophyll production and that chlorophyll production is making that photosynthesis to produce more energy for the plant. So it has to be given to the plant. The plant has to have magnesium sulfate in order for the plant to grow healthy, bigger and have a strong root. Now the problem of magnesium sulfate is closely similar to the nitrogen deficiency but the only thing you can see of this issue when you see yellowing of the leaves that start from the top the young the, the young leaves then all the way down so that is the uh, your plants is missing with the sulfur and then if it comes from below from the you know from the old leaves and all the way all the way to the top then that means that your your plants need nitrogen so there is a nitrogen deficiency now why is it important for the gardeners to use magnesium sulfate well magnesium sulfate your plants don't need much of magnesium sulfate only just a little bit and since they are present in the soil but they have the tendency to be depleted. Now, if there is a depletion of magnesium and sulfur in the soil, then your plants would not be able to absorb nutrients properly. So how are you doing? How do you measure the Epsom salt? I'm going to show you. <laughs> All right, hello, happy YouTubers down there. I'm here, Marcelina here with Greg Steven. What's up? <laughs> so, we're talking about, we're exploring the magnesium, magnesium sulfate. sulfate. Now, Greg, what is the big deal of Epsom salt in the garden? Nothing. Fake, <laughs> fake news. It's a fake news. It doesn't news. do anything. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Gives your plants a good massage in the hot water. Hold on, that was not me. It's just getting dark in here. Yeah. So this is the Epsom salt. So nothing. So it is. <laughs> Where'd you get this stuff from? I get that from Dollar Store. How much you pay for that? 
dollar. A dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the name, right? So that is the best inexpensive methods to improve your garden. You know why it's so expensive? It doesn't work. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what this stuff does. What is the big deal about Epsom salts? Everybody talks about it. I've seen a million videos on YouTube. Everybody does Epsom salts. Okay, for us, it's good for taking a hot bath. But what about for plants? Well, do you know that magnesium is helping to, in the process of photosynthesis? So, and sulfur is also helping the production of chlorophyll. So, it is essential to give magnesium sulfate to your plant. And the sulfur also the sulfur. develops roots in the plant. Yeah, so the fertilizer, fertilizer can build up salt in the soil and the magnesium sulfate tends to help uh, recover the, to separate that yeah. fertilizer so the plant can absorb the nutrients. So the photosynthesis is the production of chlorophyll, right? Do you know what the chemical formula for chlorophyll is? Do you remember? I think it is C4. 55, it's 72 in MG, MG is and oxygen 5 not 5, 4 whatever four. oh whatever <laughs> but the thing that to take note is you have a ton of carbon a ton of hydrogen and only one. sufficient <laughs> oxygen but there's only one molecule of magnesium in chlorophyll yeah. so if that plant happens to be deprived of that one molecule. molecule of magnesium, it's not going to produce chlorophyll in the plant. You just and you're gonna end up getting yellowing on the top of the plant that this looks is like malabar. this. But it's you, got the, the, but you have been given this, this uh, you just give this malabar with uh, Epsom salt as you can see. Yeah, I just gave it, it two days it, ago though. Yeah, and it's, look, look at that, look at it, improved. It's, you're not, it's not going to improve in the old leaves, you're going to see it in the new leaves. Yeah. Yeah, so once these old leaves are cut off and we eat those, then the new leaves come out are going to be solid green. green. Yeah, green. So the Epsom salt is... When I, we first, when I first started gardening, I kept waiting and checking daily to see if the faded out leaves we're going to start turning green again that's why you can uh, the deficiency of sulfur deficiency you will see the start the yellowing of the leaves start from the top from the young shoot then all the way down and the hmm. iron deficiency or nitrogen deficiency will start from below from the old leaves then all the way to the top so this one here it is sulfur deficiency this is sulfate species. You can see it starts from the top and all the way down. So by uh, giving the magnesium sulfate, what's the difference it's of the chlorosis with magnesium sulfate versus chlorosis from lack of iron? Well, did that you, is a different problem. Did you talk about that? That's a different problem. The, uh, but iron how do you recognize the two, one from the other? How do you know if it's deficient in iron or if it's magnesium sulfate? That's why it is. It is. They are closely similar. Very when similar, at, but, but, very one yellows, similar. but one yellows from the top and the other yellows from the bottom. The iron smell the deficiency. What is that? That's bee balm. Smell it. What's it smell like? Yeah, it smells balm. Yeah, it smells good, doesn't it? That's good for you. It's because you have mosquitoes. Oh, yeah. I ain't got, got no mosquitoes, man. So, Greg. What? Since you've been applying the Epsom salt in the garden, how much, how much uh, Epsom salt did you give to the plant? one tablespoon per gallon of water one tablespoon per gallon. now this particular little plant you were just showing them came out of a hydroponic system and i just poured it right into the hydroponic system. system yeah and just by calculating how many gallons of water are in that tube do, using mathematical you know, formulas <laughs> here's the thing guys the growing plants in water has a different response in fertilizer as opposed to growing it in the soil now, do you know that the magnesium, did I say that the magnesium sulfate uh, is supposed to break down the, fert the salt in the fertilizer building up in the soil? Did I say no, that? Not since I've been here. You might have said it <laughs> earlier today. Yeah, this, the magnesium sulfate tends to break down the, because if the fertilizer is building up too much salt in the garden, and in order for the, to separate that, the magnesium sulfate is helping that nutrients and I see that one once in my my plant but here is the thing 
I just discovered guys that my seeds I give it some sort to my my seeds and my seeds died and I couldn't another figure experiment out experiment another experiment I couldn't out like what the <laughs> heck <laughs> what's wrong with my seeds I said and then we've been growing that plant you, you all year you, long you told me like here's the master gardener mm, kill the plant kill the plant so i did she kills more of my beautiful <laughs> plants by giving so them i did stuff. a research on it <laughs> how is the epsom salt you know affecting the growth of seeds and i found out one of the articles said never give magnesium sulfate to seeds because if you do the seeds is sensitive to salt, magnesium sulfate and it will die and that is good thing to know so if you have seeds don't give magnesium sulfate yeah. so how about in the lawn you know what how much if some sort are you going to uh, you lawn? know what if i was giving it the lawn i would just get a 10 pound bag of this stuff grab it by the handful and just, just throw it. it just throw it out there because you don't need a lot you just need a very yeah. little very little bit so just Throw it across your grass and watch it green up in the next two, two weeks. Can you imagine just one little molecule mm -hmm. will help your this plants? Sure is a and lot this is very cheaper essential. Than Scott's fertilizer, that's for oh, yeah? dog, sure. yeah. So if you use Epsom <laughs> salt, you definitely mix it. Either mix it in the water, or you can. Uh, you can do it as a foliar spray. Yeah, also, spray. Take and, one table. Uh, take one tablespoon of Epsom salt. Put it in water in your sprayer, and as a foliar spray, just spray it right on your plants. That is the fastest way to get it into your plants system. did you know the other the other day I was uh, checking my hibiscus and I found one slug on the top of the hibiscus digging into the flower I said what what a slug how does this how dare him so I took it out <laughs> I took it out and covered with Epsom salt and it was just turned into oh, water yeah. so what I did I spray Here's the thing guys, you need the Epsom salt and you water the plants first and then put the Epsom salt and then don't water it. Don't water it after you put the Epsom salt and then these slugs can cross into mm. into the plant. And that's that's a good thing for the Epsom salt. Yeah. So well, uh, especially roses. Now when you apply Epsom salt in the roses, apply one uh, one half cup and spread that in on the base of the rose because it helps the, the cane of the basal cane of the rose and also it helps the production of the flower hmm. okay so it has to be working the magnesium and sulfur has to be how often working together. should you give this to your plants well i did every two weeks every two weeks I did it this way. But it doesn't it doesn't hurt your plants if you no, give it every you week. Can't, you can't overdose it. You can't overdose magnesium sulfate. So mm -hmm. I think that is the best best way to begin a garden. So if you also uh, use Epsom salt when you plant trees or plant roses, you did that one time. How did you apply the Epsom salt when you plant a tree on the front? I just took a half a cup of it and poured it in the hole before I put the plant in there. Did you cover uh, did you cover soil up there? Yeah, a little bit, but I put compost in the hole with compost. it. Yeah. So you have to put one cup in a hole, put that in the hole and place your your tree. tomato your tomatoes and peppers will taste better. They have a better taste when you're using Epsom salt. If you've ever had a banana or a banana, a tomato that you bought at the grocery store and you taste it and it's so blah, there's no flavor to it, that's a hydroponic tomato. It it grew, it looks beautiful. Um, but it has no taste and when you are adding Epsom salt to your soil or to your hydroponics you're going to get a much better tasting tomato and makes your peppers taste a lot so better. So is that too. the sulfur making the taste? Yes it's the sulfur yeah. that makes it taste better. It, it is also uh, when your paper it is also good for papers mm -hmm. you spray the papers in their flowering stage and then spray foliar spray with the Epsom salt one teaspoon of Epsom salt per gallon and then make a foliar spray this will give a bigger fruit in your how about you, how about your citrus trees you recommend using this as a foil yeah all the also? plants you can apply mm -hmm. that all the plants except seeds <laughs> no seeds you know what it's getting dark it's already yeah, night I know. we're gonna so have to call this a wrap tonight guys <laughs> so we just you know but we have a lot of you know lights in the garden yeah inside we do <laughs> so is there any, anything you no. can add to the Epsom salt not really, you pretty much covered everything. Get Epsom salt, guys, Cheap. and it is the cheapest way to improve your garden. This is Greg Stevens. This is Marcelina. 
grow big, and grow green, grow green, a piece. A piece. <laughs> <laughs>